Hello and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. I'm Blake, here with Josh, and this is episode 5. How you feeling, Josh? I feel good. Five episodes in, five mm. hours of us conversation talking. that of is documented forever. Mm. That is, that's a cool thing. That's mm. a cool thing. No amount of years will break our friendship. That's what I'm taking <laughs> away from this. There are hours sure, of our, sure. our talking, you know. We'll live forever is basically what I'm trying to get at. Um, <laughs> we will. We are eternally mm, on mm, the tube mm-hmm. talking about our lives. <laughs> so, Josh, what have you been uh, up to this week? Um, I would say that the highlight of my week was probably uh, the Delaware State Fair. Uh, I just got back okay. from it. Okay. Uh, as... The time I'm recording this, I had I literally just got back, mm. and it was fun. I kind of kind of re-injured my knee, which mm. was a bummer. Yeah, uh, I have a knee injury for those of you that don't know, but whatever. Um, brushing past that, uh, it was a fun time. It's very cool. Reminds me of home. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah. but yeah, on the way back, um, I was talking to the people that I was with, and I had a a cool realization. What is that? Um, so we were driving and it was me, my friend Mark, and uh, my friend Megan. Um, all three of us are interns together this summer. Okay. And Megan said, uh, as we passed the car, she's like, oh, I'm sure they're so mad at me. I left my high beams on as we passed them. And high beams. And she was referring to uh, her brights and like in her car yeah and and um she she just referred to them in a completely different name with a completely different name yeah and like that's just a very normal thing it's just like she had never heard of brights and that's very common where we're from yeah at least in indiana but like it's just it's just kind of fun to think about like how many like common phrases or words are just not used other places. Well, you know? there's a, so like, uh, like, there's a debate on like fireflies and lightning bugs. You know, have you ever yeah, heard that? Yeah, like yeah. they're the it's same, the same insect. Yeah. yeah. Fireflies, lightning bugs. Um, there are a few, there are a few other things like, like, um, this one's a bit dumber, but like, have you ever he- heard anybody call, um, a remote, like a TV remote? I've heard people call it a controller. I've heard people yeah. call it a clicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think those people are weird. I don't associate with those people. <laughs> Anybody who calls a remote a clicker, like they need to go away. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at, you know. So yeah, if you're watching sure. this and you call a remote a clicker, it's not too late to change. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> There's um, light at the end of the tunnel. Anybody can change, no mm, matter what part of mm-hmm. life you're in. But <laughs> <laughs> um, the the uh, big debate between pop and soda, and uh, in some places I'm pretty sure they only call it Coke. Like I'm pretty sure they just yes, say I'll but take a Coke with that. With that specifically, though, um, it's at least recognized like the other things. It's yeah. like if you're in California and you say, um, I want to pop soda or yeah. pop, whichever one it is out there. I don't know. <laughs> is, is it pop there? Uh, no, soda? it's soda. I, I think okay. So, God, but I if, you say, if you say, if you say like, <laughs> if you soda say, more. hey, like, can I get a pop? They'll know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with the, with the flasher, with i called it flashers what in the, is that another one? <laughs> uh i mean like i, I, I don't guess. call it that i don't know okay with your brights like mm. like um people in delaware don't know what that is like they yeah. call it high beams like that is the the mm. that is what they call a bunch it. of a bunch of sick so. animals man um <laughs> <laughs> so this week i uh i've been 3d printing a prop with a friend well i say i uh my friend nolan has 3D printed me a prop, uh, and I've sort of idly stood by, and um, it feels like the equivalent of, like, when I was a, a kid helping my dad in his garage. Like, I'd say I was helping, <laughs> but really I was just, like, holding a light, basically. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I yeah. loomed over his shoulder as he, like, uh, put files into this 3D printer and worked magic, and I was like, mm, yes, I'm a contributor to mm, you know? <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that incredible that, like that technology exists oh my goodness so it the print to, so what it is um the print is of a of a visor to a helmet uh for a prop that we're making and uh, yeah. i watched him he downloaded an obj file we converted it and he put it like he uh plugged in 
he plugged it up to his 3D printer, and then I see it start, and it lays out this outline that looks like a shape of the visor that it's going to be, and it's just this hot plastic, and it, it's when it burns, it smells like corn, and I'm like, this is this is interesting, <laughs> and uh, I think 14 hours later, he sends me a message. He's like, it's done. <laughs> and I see the first half of this and it's really come together and I'm like it is insane to me that we are capable like that these pr uh, machines can just print 3d files like he is literally finding yeah. solutions to all these problems like the printers uh, from what I've read a lot of them are self-sustaining like they can print more parts of their own like a uh, at where I work they have what's <laughs> called a maker bot 2.0 and it uh, I'm pretty sure it was designed with the intent of printing parts for more 3d printers. Like, can you imagine that? <laughs> that is that is insane. Machines yeah. that build themselves, man. Uh, Skynet is coming. <laughs> the Terminator was right. We need to <laughs> cease. Yeah, we are we are going to be overthrown by machines. <laughs> mm. Yeah, <laughs> that that is so cool though. That like, that technology, it's just, it's it's very very cool. It's witchcraft, brother. <sighs> we need to call <laughs> the authorities. <laughs> Um, All right, um, Mark. Uh, Mark asked me uh, a question earlier. I don't know why I thought of this. Like, yeah. it's a really weird, like rabbit hole. But like, so <laughs> Mark asked me this question the other day, and I just think it's a fun little like discussion. Okay, but, Blake, would you rather live in a world without animals or a world without plants? Um, and like just keep in mind that like this this hypothetical world can you know function like it can sustain itself without uh, like uh, the other you see but I... would you <laughs> would you rather live without plants or animals um well you know i don't know how you can qualify it like that you need plants to live you know what i mean no you no, no, no. <laughs> uh, no it's a it, it is a hypothetical question like you are living in a world where plants are not necessary or you are living in a world where animals are not necessary. I think like, I think uh, I think I would live in a world without plants because mm -hmm. well, first of all, like if you know, my first thought was well, it would have to be animals because you know you can't live in a world without plants. Plants supply everything. Yeah. But if this is a hypothetical future where say we mm -hmm. you know produce our own oxygen, whatever, uh, it gets yeah. so lonely without animals. You know what I mean? Like plants, uh, yeah. they populate they populate most of the world. Yes, they give animals a home. Yes, but like. At the end of the day, you don't cuddle up with a tree. You know, you cuddle up with a cat or a That's dog true. or something. Um, yeah. Now, th what this would do to the ecosystem and the world uh, would be no, devastating. It's irrelevant. it's irrelevant. Yeah, it's irrelevant. <laughs> like, it's just a hypothetical where it can sustain it's just... itself. See, it's interesting that you say it because, like, my answer was actually um, the opposite. Really? Um, I would choose to – I would choose to live – in a world without animals why do you say that and so i've i've wrestled with both i wrestled with both and i think there's a lot of like credibility to choosing either but at the end of the day i decided that um that i would rather live in a world with plants for these reasons um for one i hate bugs and I, I, I section them in with animals. They're gone. But um, the more practical reasons are um, the world would be so ugly without plants. And, yeah, you could live, like, out west or something. But, like, without plants, like, think about how ugly Indiana would be. You know what I mean? Well, I'm, I'm a man. And, like, see, I, and I, it would also just be so weird because you would just see animals out everywhere. It's like, oh, there's a coyote, like, just out there. Well, well, and, here... like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but, like, the another reason for, for choosing plants is that, for one, it would force me to eat healthier <laughs> because, like, like, I wouldn't have, like, <laughs> like i wouldn't have like my only food would essentially be like so you need to know, genocide all the animals so you can have a better diet <laughs> there's too many tasty meats in the world right now man oh my gosh no i you know um but okay. like without yeah. animals though like we wouldn't have milk like we wouldn't <laughs> like i don't know it, it, it's it's a ridiculous it's tricky. hypothetical it's tricky. Yeah. um it is a ridiculous hypothetical <laughs> but it's kind of fun to think about like which 
I well, don't, we talked I don't even about know. we once talked like, about um, a hypothetical where um, we talked about if the Planet of the Apes. We had like an hour long conversation about this. I wish yes, this was on the way home from the airport. On the way home from the airport, we talked about yeah. if animals all suddenly became sentient and tried to rise up and kill people. Like, would they win? Mm-hmm. And my answer was no. I don't think so. Yeah, my answer was also no. Uh, and but, the reason is, I feel like we have to explain ourselves. <laughs> but because um, I can't operate the end of the machines. Day, yeah, because the argument is, yes, they could. They have the potential to learn how to do it, but mm-hmm. it's like it's like taking myself. If like I had to fly a fighter jet, <laughs> like I don't know how to do it. Yeah. So no way a with that logic, with that those. logic, a, <laughs> yeah, like a giraffe wouldn't know how to do it either. And most animals don't have like. Fingers no, or dude, like of co- thumbs. Everybody knows like, that's so stupid. Yeah, everybody like, knows giraffes drive heavy, like armored Humvees. Okay, that's <laughs> that's what this is. Um, yeah, our, our the oceans are lost was, cause. Our decision we never go was, back. We never go. Yeah, back. no, don't go in the oceans. Like it is, it is <laughs> lost cause. You you are screwed in the ocean. But like on land, um, the <laughs> the two things the two things that would make us come out on top is just the advantage we have in like. Like, we're just so far ahead of them. Like, yeah. we have all these weapons, we have all this knowledge on how to use them, and we're, we're ahead of the game. And then the second one, which we discussed a lot, a lot is just the lack of communication between animals. Mm-hmm. Because while they're intelligent, like, mm-hmm. I don't believe they would all be able to communicate with each other. Like, no. It would be like it would well, be like the, me and someone from China trying to communicate. Well, I mean, look where at look at they humans. only speak look how, Chinese and look I only speak English. Look how we get along. I mean, look at oh. any world events going on right now. You know, we're mm-hmm. we're all capable of understanding each other, but we still don't. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and like, it's not like every single animal is going to side with the animals. Like no. there would be animals that are like defectors. Like, Remember we t- the humans. <laughs> the humans are important. Like we, we need them, about but they're also they're also like. The humans that are like the animals have rights. We need to have dog cities. We we talked about <laughs> like, like pet defectors who didn't want to join the animal resistance. <laughs> My owner's good to me. I don't want to kill them. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't know. It's it, it, it's a funny conversation. It's a funny yeah. idea. No, but... well, it's 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 interesting to entertain the thought because can you imagine just like walking to work on your commute and you just fight all the animals that you see on your way there like squirrels are leaping out of trees and you're just punching them on your way to work you know (laughs) oh gosh that being said like animals can really mess you up though oh yeah no we're very there would definitely be a lot of casualties like a lot of people (laughs) would die yeah especially to uh um i mean you know i know it's in the planet of the apes but like um just all prime uh, primates, you know, that that strength. Yeah. They could a chimpanzee could just rip a man in half. I swear, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. I'd give that a Google before you just blindly believe me. But I'm pretty sure that they're that <laughs> no, strong. Just blindly believe us. <laughs> you can tell from our previous episodes that we have all the animal knowledge. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, dude, I watched Mission Impossible Five. Um, that was a afternoon. hard. A hard. Oh, I don't. Of I don't want to. There's no. There's no <laughs> such thing as a transition. It's just I introduced a new topic of conversation. That movie, to me, to me, <laughs> we personally, were talking about. We were talking about action. Is a ten out of ten. fighting animals, and then we we Mission went over Impossible to another Five action movie. Is a ten but... out of ten to me. Um, it can't be movie. said about. Can't be said about. Have you seen Mission Impossible Five? Yes. Oh, I have seen. I've seen the first Mission um, Impossible. And I've seen three through five. Three through five. Hey, those I haven't are the... seen two. No, I no. Okay, okay. Um, don't, first of all, don't ever watch two. Uh, it's crazy <laughs> to me. It's crazy to me how terrible that movie was, despite how good the rest of them have been. Outlandish, sure. Yeah. But number two was just like I, I almost couldn't stay awake through it, which is surprising considering how much I love Tom Cruise. You know, the man could do anything yeah. and I'd be hooked. <laughs> Yeah, he is one of those actors for sure. He's um, incredible. He dangled outside of a of a plane in Rogue Nation. It flew off, and he was out on the <laughs> side. And at the time of this recording, at the time of this recording, uh, in three days, I'm going to be seeing Mission Impossible Fallout. Uh, I will let you know in the comments below how much I love that movie because it's it's not out yet, 
It will be by the time this podcast is released, but I'm so excited to see that movie. <laughs> he learned to fly a helicopter. That is so commendable. I talk about Tom Cruise That's every awesome. single day, and I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Dude, some actors, like... <laughs> That is funny. That is really funny. Just your devotion I don't, to this man that I don't you've never rec- met. I don't recall the last <laughs> time I didn't talk about Tom Cruise, you know, in a day. It's been, you know what's so sad? It's been weeks. I've talked about Tom Cruise every single day for weeks. I have a problem. <laughs> it astounds me, um, like, the dedication to, like, method acting that some actors... Uh, oh yeah like the the links that they'll go to like get into character Ooh, like it's... i know that um i know that leonardo dicaprio in preparation for the revenant um like legitimately like slept inside a horse oh. like he slept like, inside get, a horse yeah at, like, oh my to god get into character for the <laughs> revenant like that's a lot <laughs> like that is that is commitment <laughs> dude like it's insane and like there are all kinds of actors like jared leto got super weird preparing to be the joker in suicide yeah, squad and which see maybe that, that didn't out. pan out but like <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get much of a chance to be fair to yeah be fair that's to him. fair like but like yeah it's just like actors will do crazy things there's one there's one insane one um i i i want to look it up because i don't recall yeah. specifically but it's jim carrey and are, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Uh, I am not so sure. No. Okay. So he, I'm going to look it up to yeah. just to like, once I'm done, you can talk about something. I'll look it up. But like, um, he's portraying another person. In a okay. Movie. Okay. And it's like a person that he knew in real life. Okay. And it got to the point where like he was that person. And, like, people that knew the person he was portraying, yeah, they were like, like, this is him. Like, this isn't Jim Carrey. Like, this is him. Like, like it is, it's the most incredible, like, example of this, like, method acting that I've ever heard. Like, it scared people. Like, it scared people that how perfect it was. Because it yeah. wasn't just, like, it wasn't just, like, I'm a reading, voice. I'm reading about it right It wasn't, right now. like... You are? You found it? Yeah. Um, okay. Like, it says, feel free to add to whatever I'm saying. But, like, it was more than just, like, a voice. It was just, it was everything. Like, it was mannerisms. It was, like, yeah, the it says, way uh, that it's he Yeah, it says Jim thought. Carrey like, in his performance in Man on the Moon. He was portraying, uh, he was, let's see, who was he portraying? Um, Andy Kaufman? Yes, it says, that's it. That's what it was. Yeah, and his, like, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, it says, like, even when the director would yell cut, he'd still insist on being called Andy on set. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it it, it was, <laughs> you're reading about it now. Yeah. But like, yeah, feel free to blurt out anything. Yeah, no, sorry, um, I, I'm reading through, I'm fascinated by this. This is, this is a lot. <laughs> that's excessive it's excessive is what it is um but i mean i guess if he got the job done you know <laughs> <laughs> no it's like it's just incredible because yeah. like i don't know it's just that kind of i don't know that kind of serious that kind of commitment like it's not something i think i could do like no like i'm obviously not a professional well, actor okay so like, you know i feel like a lot of people think um actors are overpaid, which, you know, a lot of them are, you know, but when you think about yeah. it, I want you to consider, um, uh, now I'm going to use Tom Cruise. I'm going to go back to Tom Cruise as my example, because I, it's just so fresh in my mind. Now I want you to look at what the man does for his money. And, you know, I know he's paid millions of dollars, but I want you to look at what he's doing. He mm-hmm. jump in the trailer it is revealed that he does a building jump he does all of his own stunts he doesn't let other people do his stunts he does all his own stunts and he jumps from one building to another and in it you see him crush his ankle you see him just absolutely destroy it on the side of this building like you see it bend backwards and he finishes the take he keeps going uh the man he did a halo jump at thirty thousand feet they practiced five jumps a day 
Uh, and they only had, like, a five-minute window during the golden hour, like, right as the sunset to get the take. Like, the amount of things that he's doing for this movie, like, not <laughs> yeah. anybody can do that, you know? He's paid millions yeah, no. of dollars because he's the man who does, like, who can do it, you know what I no, mean? for real. Like, there are certain actors that are just simply on another level than it's, others. Um, and it's obvious. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. Like... Tom Cruise and Leonardo DiCaprio. Have you ever seen uh, and, Philip um, Seymour Hoffman? Jim Carrey. Like, what? Philip Seymour Hoffman. Have you ever uh, no, seen I him haven't. in anything? Uh, well, he was in Mission, he was in Mission Impossible 3. Um, so, okay. yeah, I've seen him in that. He's he's the, he's the a really creepy villain. He's in a movie yeah, called Happiness. I just Happiness. don't recall the he's, name. Yeah, no, he is, uh, he's, he's dead now. But all of his characters, he plays like a lot of weird characters, like a lot of grimy characters kind of gross people yeah. and he's so good at playing that caricature like you just you feel icky when you look at him on screen <laughs> yeah um oh man are there any actors that you would <laughs> are there any actors that you would wear like a shirt of and when i say a shirt i mean like a shirt with their face all over it because my friend just bought a tom cruise shirt uh, with just photos of Tom Cruise all over it. Like, are there any <laughs> actors out there, or just any celebrities that you love so much, you would wear a shirt covered in them? <laughs> um, yeah, there are probably a couple. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of Harrison Ford. Okay, I, good I choice. I just love Harrison Ford. I love all of his movies. Like, mm. I mean, mm -hmm. I would I would wear a Harrison Ford shirt. Um, Is that part of why? Uh, you enjoy Indiana Josh so much is because you get to embody your inner Harrison Ford. I mean, yeah, that's probably a little bit of it. I like, mean, honestly, probably you, where the idea came from. <laughs> when you think of like, it, that's the closest you'll really ever have to being Harrison Ford is literally playing a parody of Harrison Ford. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely truth to that. I would say, um, yeah. Besides Harrison Ford though, uh, I, I really like Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. Um, yeah. And I actually, this is a new, like, not a new actor, but an actor that I've recently just gained a ton of appreciation for. Yeah. But I really love Hugh Jackman. Okay. And yeah. just, like, the amount of range that he has. Well, he like, can a sing, lot of he can dance, he can be Wolverine, like, you know? <laughs> exactly. No, seriously, literally... Logan and the Greatest Showman came out in the same year. Like, <laughs> no, that is that is crazy that you bring that they up. Book, considering they bookended dark the same year. Contrast like, like, between those films, like the the content of. Man, I never even thought of it that way. Uh, it's crazy yeah. that you bring that up. That's so funny. They bookended. They bookended 2017. Like, <laughs> that's insane. Like, that is range. Like. Not anybody can do that. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's like, can you picture Tom Hardy playing uh, P.T. Barnum in The Greatest no. Showman? No. Like, maybe he could do it. I don't know. Like, that's no knock on him, but it's just like, not anybody can do it. Like, you know, I only know, <laughs> I know this is weird. I only know Tom Hardy um, as Bane. I can't think of, um, what else is it? He's in Mad Max, right? That's Tom Hardy, Mad Max Fury Road. Um, I mean, he's in a yes. lot of things. Yeah. He's um, in... Okay, sorry. There was a brief moment where I was like, I cannot picture what he looks like because I can only imagine he's... him with the Bane mask on. But that's not true. Yeah. I know what Tom Hardy looks like. <laughs> <laughs> he's in uh, He's in The Revenant. Um, I have actually not seen The Revenant. That is a movie that I should definitely really? watch. Really? Yeah, I've not seen. It's just one oh, of those yeah. movies that like I never saw in theaters and it slipped past me. Um, yeah, The Revenant is really good. Like, it's one of those movies that it's like, um. I wouldn't say that, like, it's a movie you want to watch, like, five times. Yeah. But, like, just because of the nature of it. Like, it's a hard movie to watch. Yeah. Just because, not because it's not good, but, like, like this source, man yeah. is suffering this the entire movie. And, like, <laughs> it's it's hard to watch. Like, it's it's a sad story. Like, it's a sad movie. Yeah. So, like, I mean... It, it's really good. That's like, how you I know. Would, that's how you know a movie it. is doing its job. Like if you actually feel like um, when you get real reactions out of a film, because like there are a lot of movies that you can watch that you just don't feel anything. You know what I mean? There are a lot of yeah. TV shows that play that like you just kind of watch them and you sit there bored, like uninterested, look, uninterested, looking off. But like when something happens to a character and you like visibly react, 
Like you like, <gasps> like you lurch in your seat or something like that. Like that is how you know a movie is good. Like you're invested. You know, like if something yeah. happens to mm-hmm. a character, like if somebody pulls the trigger on a gun and you're like, <gasps> you know, because you're, yeah. you're just terrified. When you actually care. Like, you yeah. actually care because it's so seldom. It really is. It feels like it's so seldom that like I watch a movie and by the end of it, like I'm totally invested. You know, I feel like I watch the, a lot the of the hardest movies. part, the hardest part about writing, about writing a story is creating compelling characters. I agree. Because because it's easy to write a good story. Like, it's easy to, like, make tie-ins. It's like, hey, like, I, we started with this, and yeah. this is where we're ending, and it's a good callback to the beginning. Like, that's not difficult. The difficult part of storytelling is making an audience care about a character. Because, yeah. like, a lot of it is the actor, but... Mm-hmm. but it also is the and, writing. And like, yeah, you actors have to can't have save terrible scripts. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I completely <laughs> lost my train of yeah. thought. I hit a brick wall. No, you're but, okay. But yeah, writing writing compelling characters is is difficult. <laughs> like yeah. character I, development is something that it is not often done well. And when it's done well, it amazes mm-hmm. me like my two favorite tv shows in the world to this day are avatar the last airbender and breaking bad yeah. and those are two examples of shows that have incredible mm-hmm. character development like i would argue that zuko from avatar the last airbender is the best character development of any character ever yeah. and then in breaking bad like all of the characters just have such deep development it's and especially Walter, like, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just character mm-hmm. development that when I see it and when it's done well, it's just something that like. It's no, there's awesome. a certain combination. I I nerd I nerd out. There's over a certain it. combination <laughs> of things that if you get right in the film, it's just absolutely magical. Um, first of all, is your yeah, for is sure. your pacing. Um, like if you're pacing, like if your movie is paced correctly, like one moment it's like you have these releases, you have all this tension and then you have a release or sometimes movies double down and you think you're going to have a like release and suddenly you have more tension, everything's amped up. And that's, that's something that I just think like, um, pacing is very vital to a film as well as like what you're saying with character development. And I think that's especially difficult and especially admirable in a lot of TV shows where character development is good. Like writing characters, especially when there are a lot of writers, you know, like when there are several writers to a TV show, keeping characters consistent across all these shows, making callbacks to things that they said like seasons ago, like having them exhibit behavior and like behavioral changes. Like if you look at a sitcom, like part of a sitcom that makes it a sitcom is there is no character development. You know, nobody learns from their mistakes because they all have these traits. They all have these quirks. You know, that's the weird kid. This is the athletic guy. You know, you kind of have these, uh, I read a, I read a term once called, uh, this was on tvtropes.com called flanderization. And that is, uh, it's talking about Flanders, the neighbor on the Simpsons. And it talks about how over time he turned from this, uh, nice, like Christian neighbor. Like that was it. Like he was just kind of a, nice guy into this like dopey caricature of just like this overly Christian um, man basically. And just how they took his um, like his biggest quirks and they just exempt, like they amplified them until the point that like, have you ever watched a, like a sitcom and somebody like you watch somebody and they're just this caricature of like one, um, just like one trait or one emotion or something like yeah. that. Like yeah. I remember every single episode of like uh, Drake and Josh that I watched as a kid. Like Drake was just an idiot. Yeah. You know, and all of those like he's so stupid. Yeah. Like you, you'd think how could he get dumber in this episode? Like what, what idiot thing is he gonna yeah. do this time? And they never learn. Like that's part of being a sitcom. Like yeah. that makes it to where you can come back in any yeah. episode because it's like ah, uh, you know this character, same old, same old. You know Homer Simpson, he's still an idiot. You know. Yeah, and I love sitcoms, but like, it's just mm-hmm. it's just it's, a it's different fascinating. Like, it's just a different mm-hmm. form of. It's a different facet of storytelling, like, really. A lot of times, yeah, it definitely is. Like a lot of times in sitcoms, uh, the characters are not even like they're either very one trait, like um, like Drake is stupid. That's his yeah. whole thing. Like, 
but, but like, he's also or cool in like, a position, you know. Um, yeah, he's cool. Like, like it's either something like that where they like pick a pick a pick a thing, and it's like this is this character is that yeah. thing, or it's just like, hey, just be yourself. Mm-hmm. Like with Seinfeld, it's yeah. like <laughs> like Jerry Seinfeld is not like acting yeah. <laughs> really. Like he's, he's just, just being, being himself, Seinfeld. and like. And, like, that's not knocking it yeah. at all. Like, I love Seinfeld, but it's just, like, I don't know. It's 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 something that is hard to do, and there are different strategies to do it. But, like like I said, like, when, when character development is done well, it's just, it's such a cool yeah. thing. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I digress. Um, are, there there any, are there any movies coming out soon that you're really excited for? Um, oh gosh, yeah, I gotta I'm think thinking about what's too. coming out. Um, I am excited oh, for the yeah. Mission Impossible. I um, can't measure my excitement. Um, gosh, what all is coming out? Uh, you know, I'm excited for. Uh, I can't even. <laughs> that clearly tells you yeah. I'm not super excited for anything because I can't think of one, well, anything I'm... that's coming out. Um, I can what tell you that? what I'm not excited for. Uh, <laughs> I'm not excited yeah. for Aquaman. <laughs> because, I don't know. It's just, yeah. I've lost all They just had a Shazam movie. trailer and... come out. Did you see that? <laughs> you yes, know, I, I, uh, do you, I don't do really, feel? the only thing I know about the character Shazam I have derived from Injustice, Gods Among Us, the video game. Um, it's a, essentially, the whole, the whole idea behind the character is it's a oh. kid in a man's body. Like so, he's he's extremely mm. immature. Isn't that what we all and, are? You know, like, I was once a kid, and now I'm like, in a man's body. You know. <laughs> yeah, but it's a literal like. You're making seven you're making this sound like we should call the police. Old, like, the kid sir, there's a child like, in your body. Remain where you are. We need to get him out of there, and then you're going to jail. You know, Shazam. <laughs> the the thing, the thing that weirded me out about the Shazam trailer is just like. It looked entertaining. Like, it looks yeah. like it's going to be a good movie. Like, yeah. at least a decent movie. It's but just a part of that universe. It, it doesn't fit in with the tone of you the also universe have, you know, at all. They have advertised like, you know it I mean? very dark. Like, the but, universe is but, so... However, yeah, I want you to... So this dark. is something one of my friends brought up to me the other day, though. Why do we have this expectation that just... Okay, just because they're in this... Um, I feel like we have this weird, twisted expectation of movies that they can't be their own thing because they're a part of this larger network. You know, we assume, yeah. oh, that can't be a Marvel movie. It looks different. You know, it's still a part of the universe. Like, why Why can't we just look yeah. at them as their own independent things? Like, I remember I was talking to somebody about the new Venom movie, and this is what really changed my mind. I was talking to a friend. I was like, isn't it weird that they're releasing a new Venom movie and it's not a part of, like, the MCU? Like, you know, t- um, like... Yeah. It's not, he's not Spider-Man's uh, villain. And they're like, no, I think it's more weird that like we look at all movies like this is how they're supposed to be. You know, just because one company really established this concept, every movie has to follow it now. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like that's, I ha- I am looking at it through a bit of a distorted lens because I kind of do expect that. Like, look at how many movies are doing that now. Look at how many movies are doing like cinematic universes. I just saw, and by cinematic universes, have you seen the movie Split? Okay, they just yeah. uh, put out a trailer for Glass, which is a movie with yeah, Mr. Yeah. Glass. It's Samuel Mr. L. Jackson, or, yeah. yeah, and I that is, that it. started with the movie Unbreakable. I believe that's what it's called, Unbreakable with Bruce Willis. Yeah, years ago, I believe that was that in the two thousands. Unbreakable. Yeah, movie. Yeah, uh, that it's movie old. was uh, two thousand. So they just established. Well, people didn't really know. Well, no, that it was but like they're be capitalizing, a, is what I'm saying. Like, there's no reason. There's no reason. Yeah, Split sure. had to be like they're they're building it up to be this. Like I don't know any. I watched the trailer. Didn't look too interesting to me personally. You know, whatever can be said about the film itself. Yeah. But like, why are they? Why does it need to be a cinematic universe? Why it couldn't split just be its own thing? Why couldn't it split from the norm? Yeah, I mean it's. It was it was yeah. it was a planned thing, but like, I don't think it particularly matters because like if you personally like don't enjoy the other films but you like Split, yeah, it's like no, because like I I like, uh, I don't like I don't like all the Marvel Split, movies, like, but I love the like, it doesn't Infinity matter, War. you know what I mean? 
Um, I, I they just mm-hmm. really uh, this yeah. has been a new age from two thousand eight with the release of Iron Man on. It's really been a new age for film, just as far as how we look at movies, yeah. like how they're made, how they connect with each other. Because honestly, it's just yeah, they're almost they're almost turning it, them into it. Really, TV it really is because if you had to watch every right. Marvel movie, like if you wanted to be like to understand everything, like every single thing that happened in the movie Avengers: Infinity War, you'd have to watch so many movies. It's not yeah. funny. Mark and I have actually been watching yeah. all the Marvel no, movies I mean, this summer. <laughs> I, I've seen my fair share <laughs> of Marvel fun. movies, like, absolutely, like, as has everybody in America. You know what I mean? It's just so all-encompassing. Like yeah. everybody's seen like Iron Man, or everybody knows who Iron Man is anyway. Like if you don't, it's like you're pretty. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, I'd go as far to say as you're uncultured if you don't know who Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man is. You know, he's been around for a decade. <laughs> he's been doing this for ten years. Like, if you don't know who he is, like, you don't keep up with really like any entertainment, honestly, because they're huge. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's how all-encompassing this is. If you don't know who Robert Downey Jr. is, you're an uncultured swine. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, <laughs> segueing away from movies, I, I'm. <laughs> we've talked about movies for a while, but I love talking about it. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, for sure. How do you? Um, <laughs> the fact that I'm even bringing this up is so weird. But um, have you ever been flashed? <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. Yeah, I have been. Have you? You have. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Before you tell the story, <laughs> um, yes, was it uh, in Bedford? But, um, how, wait. Hang on, hang on. Don't tell. Don't tell me yet. Was it on the Milwaukee no. Trail? No. Okay. Oh, dang it. I was okay. <laughs> so, uh, I I have also been flashed, and it was back in high school, and I. I just recently discovered, like, this... I, I recently had a revelation about it. <laughs> but, like, I was just I was just there. Like, I was meeting people at Stack Rock, which, if you don't know what that is, like, it's just a cool, like, limestone structure made blocks. out of, um... Yeah. Like, limestone blocks, mm-hmm. like, from a quarry. But, um... So... <laughs> so, I was on my way yeah. there to meet people. And this this man wait, wait, was wait, walking this, on the it, trail. This was a man. He was just like, <laughs> yes, it was a man, a man, and he was walking down at the time train tracks, like walking down like that that gravelly area, and he was just walking past. Oh, me. He was no. wearing a trench coat, and, and I thought it was really but, weird, but I, you know, Josh, like, when I you just kind of kept going, <laughs> and 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 as we're passing each other, the man looks at me and he's like, "Hey," and like, <laughs> and I turn and look at him, and I'm like, "Hello," and he just like, <laughs> like <laughs> he lays it all out there, and then he runs, like he starts running. <laughs> And I'm just like, like I'm, I'm taken so aback. I'm like, what? Like, what just happened? And and I could have sworn that I had heard people at BNL talking about this guy, like the Milwaukee Flasher. Like, I thought this is something that happened to a lot of people. And I was just talking about it the other day with like a bunch of my like Bedford friends. And I was like, you know, like the Milwaukee flasher will get you. And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and it's like, you know, the Milwaukee flasher. Cause like, I thought this was normal. Like obviously not oh, yeah. normal, every, but every like time, every time you walk the public people, trail, this man whips but, his penis out. It's, it's fine. <laughs> No, 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 yeah. no. I didn't think that, but like I thought that it was something that happened. Like I thought I thought it was like a known thing. It's like there's this dude that like will occasionally but like no, it's just me. Um now, <laughs> like I don't know. Like Now Josh, I, I want you to know 
that when you opened this story, I thought you were talking about a woman. <laughs> you know? No. Because No. I, I want okay, so I was flashed when I was in I was in the, the ninth grade and I was on the lake. I was on Lake Monroe on a boat with my friends and uh, this uh-huh. pontoon party boat of what I could only assume were college women uh, rode by. And um, my friend and I, we were sitting on the boat, and they all looked like they were super inebriated. And they looked at us, and they started screaming. And I was with my family at the time. And three of these girls just, <laughs> uh, they lift up their tops uh, right right then and there. And uh, my, my you know, 14-year-old eyes, I was, this was the greatest thing I'd ever witnessed. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is peak right here. And, you know, just comparing that to your experience, um, <laughs> uh-huh. I, um, I feel like I came out on top in this one. <laughs> yeah, you definitely had the better experience. Because you were like, this man came. <laughs> but man, do I have a funny memory. Um. <laughs> That's terrible. Dude, I don't even think that's flash. Like, somebody, uh, I mean, I guess all of it's indecent exposure, but I wouldn't even tell people you got flashed. It's like, a man, a man indecently exposed himself to me. Like, you need a teddy bear to point at, to, like, where he looked at you <laughs> for your therapist. Man, that's awful. Um, <laughs> I, uh, oh my I don't think I've ever been flashed out. Um, no, that's not true. We don't have to go into this. It's fine. <laughs> no there's there's oh, just do you like, have a it's not a story, a story it's just, well i mean it's as simple as a shirt being lifted <laughs> that's it that's the story um yeah uh, well <laughs> okay. anyway we can no. move on from this i'm sorry no, i'm sorry okay. that was a that weird was thing to bring up the, like... um yeah, what made me think of it was was when I was talking about the headlights earlier, and I accidentally called them flashers for some reason. And so it made you think about all those times you've been flashed. It's been in my yeah. head since then. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Sorry, I mm-hmm. that was no, a weird um, deviation. I have a I have a brief <laughs> a brief side topic. This is this is something that uh, I brought up to you earlier today. Um, our, our friend Ty, he, I saw he posted about this on Facebook a little while ago, and he asked a question, and I just I want to get your answer on it. Uh, he asked, uh, do you think exercise is a hobby, or is it, like, a necessity? Um, well, it depends on okay. how you define necessity, mm-hmm. I suppose. Just because, like, just talking about it, without giving it any thought i would say no um no it is not a necessity because you can live your life without doing yeah yeah you understand what i mean Mm -hmm. like you hear my reasoning but with that being said like Mm -hmm. with exercise like you could potentially extend your life so um is it a necessity for a long healthy life yeah potentially maybe not like i know that a healthy diet is more important but um yeah i mean i don't know like you know i I guess i just bring this up because exercise um honestly has been one of the most crucial things in shaping basically the past i'd say four or five uh like four ish years of my life because i diametrically changed who i was uh when i started uh, working out. Shout out to our dear friend Austin. I, I still remember uh, when I was a junior in high school. Um, I was pretty overweight at the time, feeling pretty insecure, not too happy about myself where I was at. And I knew Austin. He was this, uh, this. I mean, he was a buff dude, you know? And I watched him just eat like a monster. Yeah. And I've never seen somebody put away food like that man. <laughs> he brought over Taco Bell once and he just stuffed his face with so many little cinnamon like cinnamon rolls it was like i was like you you disgust me man <laughs> you like you what is and finally i i asked him in the middle like well his face is just stuffed with sugar i was like how do you eat that garbage and look like this and look like this and, and he goes look like and this. like amidst yeah. like like sugar <laughs> and like frosting in his mouth he was like oh it's simple and then he showed me this workout plan 
And that's what really started like the change in my life. It's really what started making me who I am today. Um, I, I do think it's Mm -hmm. personally, this is just my opinion. I think it's a necessity because I do it, um, uh, probably I'd say on average, I exercise three days a week. Um, I've been doing that more recently, but for the past basically four years as a whole, I've gone to the gym basically three days a week. And it's just, I go there, I like, that's where I leave my problems, it's where I leave things from work, like if I'm stressed, if I'm upset about anything, I just leave it there. You know what I mean? I think it's a great stress reliever, I think it's, uh, yeah. I, part of it is just, I want to be able to walk when I'm old. You know what I mean? Like, I know so many people who like, uh, yeah. who really aren't that old and kind of their bodies are failing them already. You know? Like, I know people with back problems and uh, some of these sort of things, and it's like, well, I've got my youth I want to hold on to it, you know, and do everything in my power to do that. And it's also a front because I just eat so much, it's not funny. I need I need to exercise to counteract the 10,000 calories I eat every day because I am a monster, Josh. You have seen me. You have seen the amounts of food that I can consume. It is heinous. Uh, I went to a yeah. buffet tonight and I had uh, four plates and dessert. Um I'm not proud of... No, I am proud of that. I wouldn't have told you if I wasn't proud of that, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, this is this is kind of along the same lines, <laughs> a little bit, just the talking about buffets. So, Bedford, Indiana, home of one of the uh, greatest Golden Corrals. Yeah, Clowns. I agree. Wholeheartedly. So, 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 so <laughs> um... <laughs> When you go to Golden Corral, do you have like a system? Like, do you have a a plan of attack when you go there? Which the way I'm phrasing it just sounds horrible, but like <laughs> like horribly disgusting. But like for me personally, like when I go, my first plate is always meat. <laughs> it is exclusively meat. So I get I get. Oh yeah, a this is my meat plate. Chicken. I get steak. I get, I get chicken. I get steak. I get roast beef, like covered in gravy, and then I get like you know I'll fill it out with some other. Dude, you might as well just I wear a shirt that, that says like, "I'm at the top of the food for. chain" because this but, just sounds like a threat to all animals. Like by pu- by putting together this plate, <laughs> it is a like a declaration of war to all animal kind. Like that you're just out to devour. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, me talking about this, maybe I would choose to live in a world with only animals and not plants, just because I don't know if I would, yeah. I'd probably starve to death in a world without me. But, like, I don't know. My my go-to every time is, like, all right, I gotta go get my meat plate. And then, oftentimes, oftentimes, over the course of, uh, of my time there, there will be a second meat plate. Like... <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> we're monsters. <laughs> we're monsters. My second meat plate. Jesus Christ. Um, Josh, uh, switching <laughs> switching gears. Uh, the answer to this question might be. It might just be no. It might just be no. Um, but is there anything relative okay. to like where you are, um, like what you're basically? This sounds crazy and like just out there. But I guess is there any one thing that you'd think you were the best at? And I want to I want to give my answer very quickly because I think it will give you a good idea. Uh, and there are not many things in this world that I feel like I've been the best at, like say in my circle of friends or anything like that. But one thing that I always felt really good about was my ability to play the da da da. You can't see it, Super Smash Brothers. Now <laughs> I've been proven wrong by going to <laughs> tournaments that I'm not the best, but doesn't change the pride that I have in my heart yeah. for that game. Is there anything that you feel like you've been really good at like that? Or, uh... um, I will say that for a long time, I would have had the same answer. <laughs> um, but I yeah. have fallen out of it a lot. So I'm nowhere near as good as I used to be. Um, because I do recall back in the day... That I did put you know, the beat down on you. Know, you know, why are we talking about the past? If you but, want to talk about the but, past, you but, can bring it, up the last but, time I no, 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 I'm was saying. Him, you know? It, it, is, it has come full circle because you are definitely better than I am now. Um, 
Except for uh, except for potential oh, oh, last oh, oh, time. Oh, oh. I this had is, you. Dude. Mm, I won. Mm, I won mm, several yeah. times you know, against. You. I don't we'll think that constitutes anything if we'll you didn't take one see. set. Smash, you didn't take one Smash set, Five is you know, coming out. You could have won individual games. Last time. Last time we didn't play sets. We just played a bunch of games like. Like, you know what? All when Smash Fi- hey, you know what? When Smash but Five boy, comes out, I want to challenge boy. you. I want to challenge you on like live stream. We, we will <laughs> settle. Mm-hmm. We will settle. I want to. I want to hype this up to be a big battle. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, <laughs> we can hype it up. We can hype it up. It'll be fun. But um, to answer your question, um, I would say yeah. like that is one thing. Um, that like. There are just certain games that I am very yeah. skilled at, which um, this is not really a competitive game, but like, like New Super <laughs> Mario Brothers, <laughs> like I'm stupid good at that game. I don't know why, but like I'm ridiculously good at that game. Um, and then Mario Kart Wii, um, it's yeah. not the case for all the Mario Karts, but Mario Kart I wanna Wii, play I am unbeatable. I claim it. I claim it. I claim it. No oh, one can. Beat. That's a bold <laughs> claim. <laughs> Which, yeah, um, I mean, it has been you know the what? case ever since the game came out. Like, I won. I've won Mario Kart Wii tournaments. <laughs> like, I have. I have trophies, Blake, <laughs> of Mario <laughs> Kart Wii trophies. in my room at home in Florida. <laughs> but anyway, not game related. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> Sorry about that little bit of an interruption. Uh, we had technical difficulties. Blake doesn't know what he's doing, but it's been resolved <laughs> yeah, I'm now. an idiot. Um, I'm a big stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big dumb dumb. Oh, but man. Regardless, um, we're just we're talking nonsense anyway. Uh, just mm. boasting about our about our abilities. I, I just wanted to talk about Super Smash Brothers when I segued into that conversation. Uh, but I do have one thing that I want. Talk crap to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring up how uh, I'm going to beat you when the new game comes out, and there's we'll no see. question about we'll that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I would say our all-time records. Um, I think I'm probably still ahead. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about all-time records here. I That's know. Not what we're I know. discussing. Let the you past know? die. Kill. Let it. the past die. Let the future live. You know, <laughs> who's the current? Ch- hey, the future, you know, we don't talk about. The we don't talk about not, the heavyweight. The future has not been written yet. <clears throat> no, there is no fate, but what we make. Sarah Connor um, got told that by Kyle Reese in the Terminator. Uh, <laughs> um, no, we don't talk about last year's heavyweight champion, baby. We talk about this year's. Okay, I'm I'm the main event. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. There's so much. There's so much egotism in that statement. And for what? And for Super Smash Brothers, dude. How pathetic. <laughs> Getting so hyped. Um, That's a silly thing. No, I whatever. wanted to. Whatever. <laughs> Something that I wanted to address is um, my envy for something that you possess. Uh, oh, something that you possessed. Uh, yeah, I'm going to lay it all on the line right now, Josh. I am so angry that you have been able to grow a luscious beard since we were in high school. And I am <laughs> crippled over here with this vagrant homeless man's hair on my face. If you could see me right now, I look like a disgusting <laughs> monster. Okay, there are these red patches on my chin and on my cheeks, and I'm just, I'm trying, okay? I want to look like the chiseled man that you are. Are you sitting there twirling your beard, laughing like a monster? Because that's what you should be doing. <laughs> no, I'm not. My and beard's I, actually you know, not too long right now, but... Well, like... it still exists, because I remember when we shot Morning Glory, we were, se- that was the summer after high school finished so we were technically like going into like freshman in college and like i remember you didn't shave for a while and your beard was just so filled in and i was just like my god like when is that gonna happen to me when am i gonna look like that (laughs) (laughs) and the day has not come and i don't think it will (laughs) the 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 speed that my facial hair grows is a blessing and a curse because i'm sure it gets annoying if you don't want it you know yes i can grow a beard but it's also annoying because a mm. lot of times women like, flock to it. You know, everybody wants to touch it. Yeah, <laughs> You're such a flock, man. <laughs> women flock yet. I'm the single one out of the two of us. So what does that tell you? <laughs> uh, dude, maybe know. it, maybe it's... it says women are more into neck beards than you'd think. 
You know, yeah, I think any ladies right. out there that are watching this, comment below what you think of this right here. I'm making the most disgusting face I can right now. <laughs> I implore you to censor that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. I know, I know. It's, my, it's mine to do what I wish. <laughs> I am not that insecure. Man, like, <laughs> it's weird. Like, these podcasts are... They are the, like, they're basically what we're doing on YouTube right now. Like, <laughs> like they are and, our and most what... consistent uploads by far. Like, we're doing them every yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Uh, we've, we haven't we've done been doing more skits in, like, a year. No. Well, it's... Over a year, you know, probably. It's immensely difficult not being together, uh, having all of these factors yeah. at play. And, you know, it's not an excuse. There's no excuse for mediocrity or not doing things, but it's just, like... This is, we can do this from anywhere, and we talk anyway, you know yeah, what I mean? True. Like, this is as easy as tuning in for an hour to just chat with my buddy, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to filming Wolf Teeth Hair Butter for Men, which, let me tell you, it <laughs> took an hour for, you know, like an hour to set up all the stuff, an hour to tear down, and like, you don't think that's that big of an amount of time, but like, just in, like, two whole hours and just like setting up and tearing down equipment, like, that's not fun, you know yeah. what I mean? inherently it's not fun to go drag a bunch of lights and like put up a like a white backdrop it's fun to see the final product but like getting yourself to do that sometimes is tough um yeah and, it's and just finding time in to, the week it's harder to come up with an idea for like something that's funny like a like a funny skit like than <clears> it is to sit down and have a conversation like yeah no. this, i could talk this, to you forever doing... man oh me too but, like, this doesn't take much effort. Like, we brief yeah. each other a little bit before we start. Like, hey, we might yeah. talk about this. But, like, yeah, this I is have, just us hanging I, out. Like, <laughs> it's, it's us hanging out and me with 11 sticky notes next to my computer. <laughs> <laughs> filled with things so I don't, I don't forget what to talk about. Um, yeah. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, as you can tell, I'm going to get real meta. Here, check this out, Cam. This is my microphone, <laughs> uh, as sponsored by the Digital Core. <laughs> I mics. lifted up, and, yeah, and I held uh, I held the <laughs> sticker right up to it, and I was like, oh, there we go. Um, I didn't, uh, I didn't show the brand on the front because <laughs> hashtag no, not a sponsor. But um... hashtag, hashtag <laughs> we're gonna get sued. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Feel free to sponsor us. We'll take. It. I do have, I do have another album suggestion for you oh, if you if you'd okay. like to hear it if you'd like to hear it yeah, uh, i yeah, just absolutely. bought this i just bought this on vinyl actually i it's not what i went into the store to get i actually went into the store to get that judas priest album that i was talking to you about nice. the other day screaming nice. for vengeance okay. and they did have it so i bought it on vinyl as well mm -hmm. but i found um this other album that i like a lot it is called age of winters by the sword it's uh it's age some more winters Age of Winters. Uh, roll that album art is what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> <I'll roll laughs> F copyright it. infringement. Um, I'll roll it. Um, it's will... it's. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, no, no, you're okay. I I am terrible at classifying music. Uh, it is uh, metal. It's very heavy instrumental. With um, there are some vocals in some of the songs, but like a lot of it is just this driving. Um, metal type um it's almost earthy is what i would consider it the whole album feels yeah. um uh, like just very rooted uh, i know that sounds ridiculous uh, i'm just blabbering right now but <laughs> age of winners i'd highly recommend it yeah um i don't necessarily have an album but uh just the type of music i've been listening to uh the past couple of days is just like are you familiar with um the avid brothers yeah if I get murdered yeah, in the yeah. city. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of them and then like Mumford and Sons and like. Do you like. Uh, kind of sound. Do you like Ain't No Man by the Avett Brothers? Do you yeah, know that song? Yeah. Ain't No Man Can't <laughs> Save Me. There. Yeah, that song's in my car. Uh, yeah. I, love, I do enjoy. There's a lot of criticism against Mumford and Sons. And you know what? I, I like Mumford and Sons. I do. Um, yeah, for sure. No, I mean, there is. A I don't like criticism. to let people. But, I don't like to let people make me feel bad about what I like. No, yeah. You know, when it I mean, comes down to it. Unless it's Jurassic World 2, in which case, you know. The thing don't. is, like, with Mumford & Sons, the reason that it has so much hate is just because so many people like it. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. one of those things where it's like, 
oh, every like basic white person loves Mumford and Sons. It's like, <laughs> sorry, like it's good music. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, I'm basic and white. I love it. <laughs> um. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't know. Um. Everybody uh takes a big poop on Nickelback. But yeah. I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't know most of their discography. <laughs> oh, for real. You know, like, you know if you played Star, Rockstar right everyone, now, if you played that song right now, like, I everybody who, like, yeah, yeah, everybody who gets angry at Nickelback, like, Nickelback sucks. Like, oh, yeah, could you name every word to Rockstar? Yes. You can. <laughs> you can. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It is what it is. Like. People get so uptight about music, and it's just like, yeah, you don't have to listen to things you don't like, obviously. No, but it's just I just like, don't like, I don't like being shamed for like, shamed like I've heard people, like, yeah, I've heard people like, why, why is it that you have to be angry at somebody else for what they, for what they listen to, especially mm-hmm. considering all the different meanings that you can derive from things. You know, maybe this song doesn't mean anything to you. That's fine. Like, let other people enjoy it. You know, just shut up. Like, I recognize now, uh, I'd like to formally apologize for, for this, even though nobody nobody asked for it, nobody really knew about this. Man, I hated um, Justin Bieber when I was younger. And I don't even know why. I think it was just because yeah. it was popular to hate. Like, when I was in, like, middle school and early high school, I hated Justin Bieber. I think just because of the idea of him. And now I, love, I look back I and I love it's, Justin Bieber now. I'll, I'll and say now, it straight up. Like, And now that I look back, it's like... Jesus, like we were like us in uh, like middle and high school, we were talking about like we were saying terrible things about this guy, and he was only I mean, like sixteen at the time. Me, I yeah. you know I was I was I was I one of those bad people. Completely transparent. I did yeah. not like <laughs> his initial um, like when he first became a thing. Like I no, well, fan, well here's the thing: I wasn't a fan of like Baby, but I'll regardless, be honest, pretty much I don't like everything the me- after that. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoy. <laughs> like, I I didn't like the music, but it was more than that. Like I feel yeah. like I just had this this problem where I didn't like him, and I didn't know mm-hmm. why. And it's like looking back now, that's so misguided. Considering yeah. he was only like when he started, he was like sixteen. He was a kid, you know. And it was, and I was even younger than him. Like I was yeah. younger than him at the time. So like, what basis, I guess, did I have to? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't get older than him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, it's it's weird. It's I, I just weird. think it's dumb. I I recognize now that I got heated about things like that, and it's so stupid. Like it's so it's so dumb looking back. I'd like to admit to that fault of like, yeah, yeah I was I, mean, I was young the and dumb once. It's so full of pointless hate. It's like it why is. do people get up in arms about like music so many things. or like like it's just like chill, chill, like. I mean, it means it. I mean, I went on a. I sent you a six-minute rant about Jurassic World two. I, I understand. No, it's, it's completely. I understand. But I understand how people get upset about these things because some yeah. people take it very seriously. What I don't understand is how people get upset at other people for that liking have these to things. Do with it. You know, like you inherently, yeah. um, like you're devaluing another person basically, yeah. like because of like the entertainment that they enjoy. Yeah. And if you do that, I, I you're, will say that I was at you're fault. the jerk. I was at fault of this very recently because I know several people that really enjoy Jurassic World, which we should just rename this podcast to Jurassic World, like because we always talk about it. But, I've talked about Tom Cruise but, and Chris Pratt and Jurassic World so many times. It's not <laughs> funny. But Jurassic World, like I know several people that enjoy the movie. And I said yeah. this to Mark. I said this to him. I was like, man, knowing, like, having seen Jurassic World changes my opinions of some people because they just don't have good taste in movies. <laughs> and it's just like, like, who gives me that right to say that? Like, that is such yeah. a snobby thing to say. <laughs> because it's like, like, who cares? Like, why it's what? one movie it's one you know like there is a there's a land of the lost poster <laughs> in my room right now a critically yeah. panned box office bomb and i yeah. love that film i have no basis to tell anybody what to enjoy yeah. is, <clears throat> um, if is bad taste in anything a thing like is there such a thing as bad taste in music bad <clears throat> taste in movies bad taste in tv shows maybe maybe Ob- but it's Ob- it's objective like that that is uh there there are things you can point a finger to and be like that is not done well this is why 
Like, I can sit and tell you reasons <clears throat> that Jurassic World wasn't executed to the potential it could have been. Yeah. But to say the whole thing is inherently bad, it's like, I don't know if I have the right. Bad taste that. is more, I, I would consider that more along the lines of like morality, like movies that are say like racist or have like yeah. propaganda or agendas or things like that. Like that's probably in bad taste, but yeah. that's not even, that's not a conversation. We don't have time for that. That's not a yeah. conversation we should get no, to yeah. today. We've, we've covered um, a lot of things. We we've can... covered a lot of ground. Um, I think we that's probably a good closer. That's a good closer, um, Jurassic Hurl 2. Um, just just a brief baseline on everything we've covered. Um, I, I recommended the album, uh, Age of Winters. Um, Josh, you, we talked about getting flashed. Uh, what? <laughs> Tom Cruise, Jurassic World, um, method acting. Man, we have covered a lot of ground tonight. Yeah. Brights and high um, beams. <laughs> brights, yeah, absolutely. Well, um... As always, um, if anybody, if you watch this podcast all the way through, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Give this, yeah. uh, give this podcast a like. This is destination unknown. We never really know what's going to happen next. And I want if you, have any... you, if you've watched this podcast from start to finish, I want you to share this podcast with three people. And I don't mean just any three people. I want you to share it with three people that you think would legitimately enjoy it. So thank you. <laughs> All right. That is my like challenge that. for you. Well, this has been Blake and Josh with Destination Unknown, and we will see you next time. See you later, guys.